Hey everybody, today we're going to be using some blend modes to composite complex edges in Photoshop. So this is kind of what our end result is going to look like. Um, maybe you have a picture of a person who you're looking to put in a different background, or maybe you've got something like a pet or some sort of complex edge um, that you need to blend in. And sometimes it's easier to do uh, with just a simple mask, but you can see here um, that if I zoom in, that edges like this can be very hard to mask because they're very wispy, they're very complicated, um, and you can do this uh, using a combination of layers and blend modes that we'll show you here today. So I'm just going to get rid of all of these layers for a second. And I'm going to go and create a solid color. I'll pick a similar color. Not quite the same, so you'll be able to tell this is indeed different. And this image is from Caesar Ricone on Unsplash. So I don't know if this is a picture of Caesar himself. This guy looks like he could be a Caesar. This black and white profile shot. That's exactly what I would imagine Caesar to have. So here, exactly, this is the problem areas. And I'll show you the exact nature of what happens. Let's try and grab these with the quick select, just to give you an example. If I follow this and come up here, this is really a nasty, if you can see the marching ants, this is a nasty selection here. It's going to get a bunch of uh, white in there and if I just click on the mask button now you can see how kind of messy this edge is so it's not a very good way to quickly composite a, a furry hairy uh, or just complicated edge in general so the first thing we're gonna do is try and isolate most of the background here so with this layer selected I'm gonna come over here into my quick select tool and I'm gonna say select subject now, Select Subject is for a newer version of Photoshop, um, but it's been in there for a couple years now, and you can see it does its level best to grab the person in question. So I'm going to hit Select and Mask, and this is pretty good. Uh, it's not quite perfect, but uh, let's start here. Now, the biggest thing that we can do is play with it so we have more than enough of these edges. So I'm just going to come over here to properties and we'll look at the radius. And the radius is going to pull in and get a little bit more aggressive. And I'll just feather out. This is a little smoother. In fact, why don't we feather even more than that? and then shift it so it comes in. So I basically want to stay away from most of the very outer edges of the subject. And in this case, there's there's some stuff to be done in there. But uh, let's try something like this. So you can see a very different looking selection here. I'm going to mask out this character. And there he is. And you can see we've lost now all of the hair. This is not a very good masking, if you ask me. So we're going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to just take it and drag it into our new layer. And that'll get us into duplication mode. And now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to set this first layer. I'm going to leave that alone and just hide it. And our second layer... I'm going to set to Darken. So you can see in Darken, what Darken is doing is the black is getting really saturated and it's pulling forward. Now, Darken is a little bit different from Multiply. Multiply is the pure color. So you can choose which one of these is better for your photo. Um, Multiply might be for this color because Darken is turning us uh, purple in some ways. But Darken can have a more naturalistic effect if you don't have a solid color background. So I'll pick Multiply for now. And then with the mask selected, I'm going to come and take my brush tool, right-click, and the size can be pretty big, 
hardness all the way down. And my flow is going to be something like 10%. I've got some smoothing on there too. That's just a little software assistance for me. And now I'm going to hit D on my keyboard. That resets Photoshop swatches to be the default two colors. And now we're going to start. You can use your left and right bracket keys to adjust your brush in real time. And we're going to just start painting back the hair that we've lost. Again, this could be maybe on your pet. Maybe this is a beard. Maybe you're just trying to put someone in a totally different place in time. And look at, look at all the detail here that we had essentially missed. Can even do it out here on the edge of the nose, especially this beard here. It's great to do for areas like this where the beard is really pulled in to the person. And we're just trying to get the outer edge so that we can recapture some, or in a lot of cases, all of this hair. The reason I've got the flow on 10% is so I can kind of have more control as I go back and forth and back and forth here. You don't want to just do a solid 100%. You're not going to really get the gradations and... Right now, we're in a path of, like, discovering where the outer bounds are of some of these wisps. Okay. That is looking good. So now I'm going to uh, turn back on my layer. <laughs> there we go. Let's see what happens when we use Darken instead. So Darken more maintains my under layer, so I'm going to use Darken instead of multiply. But of course, now I've got uh, all of this sort of extra stuff happening on the layer below. So likewise, I'm going to select the mask in that layer. And if you like, what I'll do here is I will change my panel option so you get a really big... There you go. Now you can see the layer is nice and big. The bottom layer that's in normal mode, now I'm selecting its mask. I'm going to hit X on my keyboard, and what that does is that just swaps these two colors around, if you haven't done that before. And now with the dark selected, I'm going to turn down the flow even more, maybe down to six. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start painting the mask away. So now what we're actually doing here is we're chipping away at the sort of white underlayer. This is really big, so maybe we want to pull some of the color in. We're kind of melting away that, that bottom layer. And we're better able to get... You can see here, I'm getting bigger and smaller with the brush. Because what you're looking for is a pretty naturalistic blend, like when would the hair start to look reasonably solid on this background? And it's going to be different per subject, it's going to be different per environment, but you generally don't want to go too uh, extreme. You know, you're kind of asking yourself, where would, where would the line be? A little bit in here. I'm going to control this piece of the neck. And a little bit up here. Right? So something like that. I'm just going to go and... You'd want so close to the nose, you'd want up in this neck and shoulder region. And now really broad strokes, you can turn your flow down to even less, say two. And with a really big brush, just go over a little bit and you can pull in the color of your background in your subject. So 
So now you've got some control. And if you want to take away color, right, you can go inside of uh, your top layer. And you can just start hiding some of that. So I'll turn up the flow. So you can see, right, you can just totally make this nose disappear there. Or I can come to the original subject. And instead of painting black, I can paint white. I'll shrink down. I'll kind of put back where it doesn't really make any sense. But you can see if you go too aggressive, right, you will show that glow. And what we're really looking for is to eliminate this, like, weird glow, halo effect. So now I'm going to swap back to black. And you just want just a little. Just enough. You can do that for just about everywhere. We'll use the bottom layer and we'll swap back to white and we'll reestablish some of our shirt and our neck here. That stuff starts to fade away on you. We'll make sure it's totally here on the darkened layer. So I'm just building that out and then I'm switching to the bottom layer and you can keep doing this switch back and forth bottom top bottom top that was a little bit a little bit too much and so you just kind of rinse and repeat and you can keep bouncing between these two layers and find out where your kind of limit is you're not remember you're not getting rid of this so if you slip you're just painting color really on the subject We're just letting me get rid of this. There we go. That glow. And that glow is a good indication that the person isn't really in the environment that, uh, that you're picturing them in. Right? And maybe I'll come back in here and just have a way at some of that. Take my flow down to like 3%. And so once you have uh, your subject in a place like this, you, I'm not entirely happy with that shoulder, but of course for the sake of demo, this will do. We take that away and we see he's totally melted away. So this is really good for uh, light backgrounds, but now you have the ability to do all sorts of compositing. And the compositing can reestablish. I'm just going to go nothing on that. And on that can reestablish the solidity of the subject and their otherwise otherworldly environment. I take those and just have them evenly distributed. Do something maybe like that. And you can see how well you get a pretty natural blend <laughs> when it stays in the artboard, that is. Um, for a subject, and it feels like their hair is really kind of honoring the environment. The the effect also, uh, since it's partially see-through, um, really kind of suggests playing with light or um, kind of bringing in that color. So does it make the hair look a little bit see-through? It does, but there's other ways and tricks to diffuse that. You could say blur everything that is uh, behind the subject uh, or potentially do little tricks to make it a little bit even better. This shoulder has gone full ghost on me, so I want to paint some of it back here. I'll turn up my flow. 
darken layer, and then my solid layer. Looking to avoid that ghostly like appearance. That's not what we're looking for. There we go. And then, of course, if you really want to, uh, I can group these. And then if you really want, you could take that and mask it and start actually masking out with the color black this color to make sure that it doesn't actually intrude in the space if you're doing something like a pattern or a complex object. It's working okay for the hair. We'll still fade it out so it's not so see-through. You can see just like that. Oop, went a little too far over there. Just like that, we've got some solidity back to our object. <laughs> this mustache is almost see-through, but the effect is actually kind of good, but the, the face and the lip would maybe come out to here. The chin. I want these lines to go in there. And so that's a quick way of doing compositing uh, for complex edges in Photoshop using just two different layers and then bouncing between the masks of those layers to achieve the desired effect. Go play with this, have some fun, and see what you're able to create using this technique. I'll see you next time, and keep designing.